Okay, creatives. In this video, we're going to explore freeze panes and groups as valued features that come built in with most spreadsheet applications. As the scope of financial data that we want to view in our template continues to grow, we'll want to draw upon these and other features to help us narrow in on exactly the views we are looking for. If you're following along from our course downloads, the file name of the spreadsheet we are using in this video is STH 1.14. Let's take a look at that file now inside Excel. On screen, we are inside the manual worksheet inside our spreadsheet, STH 1.14, and we have our by now familiar revenue accounts in the more fulsome view with grandparent, parent, and child accounts to give us more data to work with. I've also added several new project columns to extend our view. We have two groupings of three columns that are added up into a subtotal. So the first grouping of three named A, B, and C as our project headers are in columns J through N. And there is an addition in column H, which is named as our group name for our subtotal, just as one. There's a second grouping with project names A, B, and C again in columns R through V. And in group subtotal number two, we have an addition of those three columns. In column F, we have a grand total of our two subtotal columns, which include all those child columns in projects A, B, and C. And I've named that 2324, just as an indication of our current fiscal year at the time of this video recording. These project headers for our grand total, subtotal, and child columns are all drawn down as value lists from our list tab. If you skipped the previous video around value lists, please go and take a look to learn how these are created. But we have our project name from the previous video with just a simple name of A through J as options, plus a empty row and a new question mark inside two curly braces as an additional option. Just if we select that one in a blank template, we can have that display in the field so that we know that a data is expected to be entered but hasn't been chosen yet. And it just sets it aside essentially as a kind of error notice, but it's separate from the typical error notices that we see inside Excel here, which usually start with a hashtag. We have our project name options. I've also added a, a dotted line on the bottom of each of the rows that we are expecting data to have just as an indication that data should be in these fields. And we have a group name as well with 10 options plus our question mark with curly braces and an empty row for our subtotal group option names. And there is a fiscal year range way over on the right, which is used for the grand total currently. And there are others here, which we can come back to later. So we see in our uh, grand total here, uh, as a drop down, all those fiscal year options from 2021, 22, all the way to 31, 32. A 10 year budget template is what we're actually working on. So it has 10 years going back to prior year actuals, last year actuals, and then current year. So this is essentially current year at the time of this video. And then our subtotals were drawing down from the group name options in the list tab and our project header options of A, B, and C are drawing down from the project name. I've also added from the previous video, if you are watching in the list options for project status, I've added subtotal and total. So we will have those options for our project status for the total and grand total and subtotal columns, and we have that question mark as well, and a empty row. Okay, so that gets us here, for example, for our total and subtotal all as options, along with projected and all the others that are here. But currently all the project columns are just projected, no actuals or any other variants. 
Also, I'm just going to point out, and we'll be looking at this later, but for now, I'm just pointing as an additional header with no kind of extra special styling at the moment, but a, a, above the project headers for A, B, and C, I've just reiterated which group subtotal these columns are meant to be summed to. And so our first A, B, and C and columns J through N have a one above them, and it's just a drop down list to choose from the group name for our subtotals. And uh, we're actually going to be using a formula to draw upon these, but for now, uh, just know that that's what those mean. So our first three columns all belong to subtotal number one, right here in column H. And then the second grouping have two above it, so that we know they belong to subtotal group with the name two. All right. So the first thing we can do that's really simple to help improve our view of this spreadsheet is to use freeze panes. You most likely, if you have used a spreadsheet at all, have run across this before, but let's just show it for, you know, good use. All right, so when you are in Google Sheets, you're going to have to define your ranges that you want frozen for columns and rows separately. But inside Excel here, we can define our rows and panes, the rows and columns that we want to remain fixed in our view uh, at the same time. And we do so by selecting an intersection field where if I choose H7 here, rows one to six will always remain fixed in place, no matter how far up and down we scroll. And all the columns to the left of our field, so that will be A through G, will also remain fixed when we scroll left and to the right. Let's go ahead with that intersection range selected in field H7 and go to view and freeze panes under the window section of our ribbon in Excel here and freeze panes. So it's created a section point here in a light gray crosshair, which has to find that frozen range up to row six and up to column G. Now when I scroll up and down, or left and right, those columns and rows that we expected are all fixed in place. And that's going to really help us understand what data we are looking at, both the account number and the project or total that it belongs to. And that's really, really key. In this version of the template, I've added dotted lines at the bottom of all the fields that I'm expecting data entry. And all the sums don't have those uh, dotted lines and the sums for, for them also have colors. So that's help, helpful guidance in this template. And the dotted lines also help us as we scroll across, we can follow account numbers a little bit easier. If you find the uh, styling of those lines to be a little bit too light and you'd like them grayer, then feel free to change the styling. For now, these are not set up as tables. We'll look at tables later. These are just manually defined styles. And look at how tables can be used to automate styling uh, in another video. But for now, this is just all manually defined styles rather than using table styles. Okay, so after freeze panes, we can look at groups now. So there are two ways to define groups, just like there were two ways to define named ranges in our previous video for our value lists. We can define groups both manually and automatically. So let's look at both. In the automatic approach, what groups will do is essentially define the children account of various parents and, and at various levels of tiers and create a toggle button for you to hide them or unhide them wherever the sums are located. So a toggle button will be added in column H 
to show or hide our project columns J through N for our subtotal one. And then another toggle will be added in column P to show or hide the child accounts of our subtotal two, which is rows column, sorry, AR through V. And then our rows are going to work similarly with the children of our parents having a toggle in their parents to show or hide. And we can do that manually or automatically. So let's look at automatically first. We can put our selection in any part of the spreadsheet, just a field anywhere. And uh, the Excel, when we select auto outline to define our groups, will do its best to define both rows and columns. But if your spreadsheet is particularly complicated and you want it to define columns and rows together, my best advice is to always select the entire worksheet. And then you're telling Excel here to try to define the groups, the outlines for your groups in both your columns and rows. Okay, the next thing we need to do is before defining the auto outline is to take a look at the preferences for the outline to make sure that they are set according to how our template here is organized. And that's going to be whether our sum row accounts are using a sum up or sum down approach. And if our column sums are to the left or to the right of the data that is being summarized. So let's go to data. And way over on the ribbon under outline, which in my version of Windows Excel here is the furthest option to the right. And click on the pop out in the bottom right hand corner for outline. And we're going to get two options for direction in our settings for the outline. The first one is summary rows below detail. And the second, second option is a toggle on or off or summary columns to right of detail. So if we toggle on summary rows below detail, that means we are using a sum down. No, we are using a sum up approach for all of our sum rows. But we're not, we're using a sum down approach. That means the summary rows are above the detail, not below. So we do not want to toggle summary rows below a detail. We don't want to turn that on. We want it off. And then for the columns, summary columns to the right of the detail. In this template, they are to the left. So we don't want that one toggled on either. So auto outline is going to work. It should work quite well if you have columns for our, your sums either to the left or to the right and rows for sums that are above or below. However, the addition function that you must use for auto outline to work is sum and essentially nothing else. Our sum if, which we are reliant on for this template is not going to work for auto outline. There's just too many components to some myth that auto outline is not built to understand. So in our manual worksheet here, I've replaced all our some ifs with manually defined ranges for some downs for our project accounts and columns and manually defined some acrosses for our subtotals and for our totals. And I see an error there, which is exactly why we do not want to use uh, manually defined ranges. When I clicked on the just to check there, it was uh, in the wrong account. So let's just fix the template now that I have got it in the right location for that sum. Let's just make sure that all of these are correct exact reason why I do not like using sums. Okay, that's fixed. I did not notice that before I press record, but that's actually a good thing. 
because now we understand those errors and we fix them. It's always good to just check your sums and make sure everything looks good. So we had those manually sum downs, manually defined sum acrosses for our two subtotal columns. And we can just check some of these others to make sure that they're all looking good and they seem to be correct. It's just that one mistake. Okay, this approach using sum is necessary for auto outline to work. If we had used as in the template worksheet, all those sums are replaced with sum if, the auto outline is not going to work in the same way. So we are going to now finally select auto outline. And rather than just selecting the field somewhere in the worksheet, I'm going to select the entire worksheet using the option between our column and row headers for A1. There's a little empty space there to click and select the entire worksheet. This will force Excel to try to auto outline both the columns and the rows, which is exactly what I want to have happen. And under data, I'm going to go under outline group and auto outline. Click on that. And Excel has successfully created two tiers in our column and row groupings. And we can see the two tiers in the upper left-hand corner under the name box, directly below the formula bar and uh, below all of our tabs for the menu items. There is two vertical numbers here in boxes, one and two, and two same boxes, but instead of vertical, they are horizontal with one and two inside them. These are the toggle buttons for the columns and rows to hide and unhide or show and hide the child's and the parent's. So with tier one, we're going to only see, and I clicked on the one for the columns, these vertical one and two, in the upper left-hand corner, clicking on that, we will hide all the children of our parent's subtotal. And clicking on two is going to show those children. We do the same for our rows, clicking on one, going to hide all the children and clicking on two will show them. I notice an error or a missed outline in our rows. Bank interest income is a child of net investment income. Its parent account is 4,200 and the account number of net investment income is 4,200. So technically these two should have been outlined where we should have a toggle for net investment to hide bank interest income. It missed it because it's the only child account of net investment and auto outline doesn't like single accounts. As children, I find it often misses them. So I can select that row and just by going to data with the outline preferences that we have set where the summary row is above the row we currently selected, I can just click on group and it will manually create a tier one grouping to hide uh, the children of net investment, which is that single account. So when I click on one now, I see what we expected to see, which is the five parent accounts of revenues. And when I click on two, all the children are there, including the child, the single child of net investment income. When we click on one to close out all those children, we can manually add an additional tier. We want to hide all of our parent accounts of our grandparent revenues, then we can select all of them, but not revenues, and then click group under data and group. I'm just going to add a third tier. So tier one now is revenues. Tier two is our parents of revenues. And tier three is our children of our parent accounts of revenues, so grandchildren. And we could do the same for our columns. I'm just going to hide. So I have less to look at. And I want to go from column P all the way to column G. Actually, I'm going to unfold and open just our second grouping. So I'm very clear that I'm going from V, not just column P, but I'm going all the way from the end of the spreadsheet, column V, to 
the last column before our, to our grand total, and that is our empty column row, which is G. It's very narrow, so we can't see the, the name of that column, but it's column G. And now if I click data and group, I have three tiers for our columns as well as our rows. And this outline level is going to be really great when we want to create a template with, say, 10 years of budgets. And we can have the same groupings of columns under each year, or we can have custom ones. And this will allow us to not have multiple tabs, one for every single year in our template, but just one worksheet. I used to have zillions of tabs for all the years, plus different tabs for all of the projects, and it just became really unwieldy. And all the link associations, the field references between the worksheets would get broken. And uh, my template would not work for me anymore. And so using groupings, instead of creating new worksheets for all the new data, creating groupings where you can hide and show what you are currently working on, and then when you're done with it, just hide it again, is a really helpful approach to make a single worksheet really functional for you. So we can have here, uh, when our template is done, 10 columns for our projects, for a uh, grand total for each of our years. And then we can have however many columns in whatever layout we want. It could be exactly the same for all of those years. And for our revenues and other uh, accounts in our rows, we can have an outline for revenues, expenses, surplus and deficit for the year, and accumulated surplus and deficit as our four tier one accounts in our rows to match our column views. And as we need with the groupings, we can open up and see the detail that we want. So that's the basics of freeze panes and groups. Just a reminder that groups will only work in auto outline using the sum function rather than sum if for all the total additions. But you can manually define them as you would like by selecting the range that doesn't include the field where you want to add the toggle on and off, whether that's the column to the left or the row that's above in our template, just miss out that column or that row and the toggle will be added in the row above or the column to the left. And you can tier as many uh, levels as you want, seven, 10, 12 or more. The challenge with that is we're gonna have a lot of toggle buttons here which is going to take up screen real estate. And on a small screen, having all kinds of toggle buttons for you no know, 10 or more nested levels of accounts and columns will make things a little bit difficult to use. So in our next video, we're going to look at filters to help us customize uh, our views on all the individual project columns, but also on our template overall. As I find the, the demand to uh, auto outline and manual outline all of our uh, revenue expense and other accounts when we're going to potentially have hundreds of them and uh, every template that we are going to want for, for different organizations or companies that we're working with for our template are going to be different. We're going to want to use something else for our uh, rows. I think for our columns outline is for groups is going to be great. But for our rows, I think we're going to want to use something else. And that's where filters steps in. So let's take a look at filters in our next video.